All right. What's better? Engineering something right or raw bandwidth? What do you think? We know that T-Mobile right now, today, has more bandwidth. We also know that we have better RF engineering, hence all the root metrics, things that we've won for years. So who's going to win? Oh, and spoiler alert, it's this one. Garcia here and today we're going to take a look at Verizon and T-Mobile's home internet gateways okay these are the same gateways that we're using for business by the way and they are 5G okay the first thing I'm going to do is look at the gateways themselves kind of give you a review of them just what they look like and things like that so nothing in depth or anything then really important we're going to look at RF and we'll review the differences in what T-Mobile is using on the N41 band and what we are using on N77, the Auction 107. And remember, we won some blocks in C-band, and I'm going to review that. And this is really important, the difference here. Then I'm going to take you along on the testing journey with me. So I picked two locations. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the locations. I didn't go out and favor us. I'm biased for Verizon. Obviously, I work here. But I went out to be kind of as fair-minded and middle of the road as I could. All right, I thought I was going to go actually find a site for Verizon and then find a site for T-Mobile and then do testing at those two locations. But lo and behold, I went and took my site survey kit out and I went and did some site surveys and I found two locations where RSRP, RSRQ, and SINAR were very similar between both bands, both carriers right us and T-Mobile so I said great I'm gonna do the testing right here and I'll just put them head to head so I'm gonna take you with me we're gonna do those speed tests and I'm gonna be forthright and candid with everything so I'm gonna show you the RSRP RSRQ and SINAR for each location I'm gonna show you each speed test that I did and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna look at some conclusions so we're gonna look at all the numbers all in one little spreadsheet and see who won the day. Here are the two routers. Uh, this is the T-Mobile router. It's elegant, simple, uh, made by Nokia. Two Ethernet ports in the back there. Uh, my DC adapter port. There's a little touch screen up here. I think it's kind of cool. It gives you uh, defaults but with the bars. So there's five bars so you can you know, kind of put it in this window or that window and you can kind of look at the bars to see if that's the best possible place for uh, connectivity for your maximum signal strength. It gets hot. It gets very hot. In fact, I'm worried the window I have it in now, um, I wouldn't leave it there in midsummer. Not here in Texas, that's for sure. Uh, I think it would overheat and and uh, turn off, to tell you the truth. So, yeah, so that's the Nokia, that's the T-Mobile 5G home internet gateway. And this is, of course, ours, the Verizon internet gateway. Two Ethernet ports, you know, DC adapter, uh, it's all underneath and you kind of run the wires in the back there. It's kind of neat. Nice, elegant. You could actually put this on your coffee table or side table or something like that. And it wouldn't look too out of place where this would. Now, I do like that. Uh, my dislikes as a technical person, wishing it had some kind of little indicator, bars. We've come to be accustomed to that on our phones. You know, we look at the bars, how strong is my signal and things like that. So. I wish it had something like that. That would uh, tell me where to put it, where it's going to have the uh, best connectivity. But it's very elegant. Again, one little light. If it's solid white, it's good. If it's red, it's something's wrong. But anyway, we're not going to go into software. I'll do another video on that, on the features of each of these and things like that. But that's it. Those are the two routes: Nokia and ASCII Corporation. Okay, what is this all about? Where well, we're going to test Verizon Home Internet Gateway and T-Mobile 5G Gateway. Now, why are we doing this? Well, there was lots of claims of superiority by T-Mobile in their 2.5 gigahertz, their N41 band, when we actually bought the C-band blocks. All right, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Okay, so lots of claims. Now, 
empirical data is starting to trickle in. Not only my data that I'm going to share with you here, but also time out. I want to show you something else. So here are the claims if you want to look them up for yourself. Verizon C-Band versus T-Mobile 2.5 gigahertz, which is better for 5G, right? You'll find this on light reading. Let's go over it real quick. So T-Mobile released a chart of its own during Verizon's investor event showing the opposite. The signals in the 2.5 gigahertz holdings actually travel much further than signals in Verizon C-Band holdings, okay? What Verizon was saying is C-Band's going to go further than the 2.5 gigahertz range that T-Mobile acquired from Sprint. And then they go on to give this little graphic here saying that since our LTE towers were built on lower spectrum holdings that we had for LTE, band 3, band 66, band 4, I think band 5, which were lower bands that could propagate further, the way we spread our towers out were based on these lower bands. And with 5G or with our C band that we're going to deploy, our towers are going to be too far from each other to be able to hand off properly. And we're going to have to densify our tower holdings. In other words, build more towers. So that was their claim. So what's the data that's come in? Okay, SRG independently tested these claims. And let's see what they say. I've just highlighted a few things here. I suggested you go and read this entire document here. Now, let's look at a couple of things here. Coverage and speeds improved radically with the addition of C-band. Coverage was nearly seamless along the same test drive or test route. The reason they're saying this is because they, they're doing a test route where there has not been any densification of towers. So they're testing the claim that T-Mobile had that we're going to have to densify our towers. And throughout at the cell edge or immediately prior to handover was quite good. They're saying the handovers were good. Adding that speeds averaged in the low to mid triple digits. Okay, hundreds of megabits. SRG data suggested a one-to-one -one overlay build of the C-band onto the existing LTE grid. This is significant. Out of this whole document, this is the line that I really concentrate on. In other words, they're refuting T-Mobile's claims and saying, look, we've given this a test drive and we've tested it and handoffs are good as RF testers. The data proves Verizon will be able to deploy C-band on the same grid, the same amount of towers, the same towers that we have today. In other words, we don't have to densify. This goes back to there's less power restrictions on the C-band versus the 2.5. So that's why we were saying back when they were complaining or trying to put it, throw us under the bus that our C-band was going to go further than the EBS BRS. That's the 2.5 gigahertz range. Okay, and then one last thing here. Its analysis may actually understate C-band performance in use cases where users are walking or stationary or FWA. It's right there. Okay, and then they go on this last paragraph saying, hey, it was very clear that we had FWA in mind when we were purchasing the C-band and designing the C-band. Okay, we're back. Now, why is this a fair test? This is a fair test because right now, Verizon and T-Mobile are very similar in technology in their prospective bands we are using for 5G. In other words, we know we're doing MIMO, right? Remember the difference between MIMO and carrier aggregation. MIMO is using multiple antennas, transmitting antennas, receiving antennas to increase data speeds and quality and things like that. Now we're doing that, T-Mobile's doing that. All right, now carrier aggregation is when we take slices of bandwidth megahertz we take slices kind of glue them together so we have more megahertz so we have wider bands so we have more spectrum okay just remember that for now now why is this a fair test because we're not doing carry aggregation yet neither is t-mobile now they have said that they're going to be doing it soon but in these tests they're not doing it i made sure of that verizon is using 60 megahertz of n77 now i i'll dig into this in in a minute and tell you more about this. And T-Mobile is using 100 megahertz. Well, 100 megahertz is definitely wider and more bandwidth than 60. So in theory, T-Mobile should be faster because they can carry more data, right? 
maybe not. So let's take a look. Okay, you may ask yourself, why do we have only 60 megahertz? And why does T-Mobile have 100 megahertz? That doesn't seem fair, does it? Well, let's go back in the way, way back machine to the auction 107, where we won some C-band licenses. If I point your attention right here, there's the C-band licenses from 37 to 4,000. Okay, now specifically now, there's broke them up in 100 megahertz chunks, which they call A block, B block, and C block. All right, now those three blocks out of the first block, and here are the blocks right here, if you see them, and each one of these little slices represents 20 megahertz. So there's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So there's 100 megahertz sliced up in the five. That's this guy right here. And then there's B and there's C. Okay, there's B and there's C. All right, so what did we win? Well, I highlighted it here in this black rectangle. So we won A1, A2, A3. So 20, 40, 60. There's our 60 megahertz. Now, did we win some over here, you know, in this? Yes, we won some over here too. But if you look closely here, the green is indicated. Here's the legend right here. And that green means that the satellite companies were going to vacate it by 2021. Now, obviously, we had some trouble with the FAA. We got all that cleared up. And now we are able to deploy this. And that's what our C-band was. That's why it's 60 megahertz now when t-mobile purchased or acquired sprint sprint already had leases for 100 megahertz of n41 band in the 2.5 gigahertz range so that's why they have 100 megahertz and we have 60 megahertz even though we have less bandwidth we still came out on top okay let me give you an idea about uh where i'm at here okay Magnolia, Texas, uh, north of Houston. You see we have our Verizon Internet Gateway. We have our T-Mobile 5G Internet device. Okay, at first I thought there was two racks on one tower. Turns out there wasn't. After some further investigation, I want to show you where these two towers were. So here's the Verizon Tower right here. And there is the T-Mobile Tower. And here I am that's the parking lot I was sitting in. So let's just take some quick measurements here. The Verizon Tower is 0.513 miles, right? Half a mile, some change. And we're 0 0.691, 0 0.7 there. So a few hundred feet difference. Just wanted to make that clear. Let's take some uh, measurements here. Okay, first up, let's go see who we're connected up to, we're going to do Verizon first. So I'm connected up to the Verizon Home Internet gateway here. And let's go ahead and... Okay, so we got Verizon at 312 down. That's impressive. Looks like we're going to hover around 21 on the way up here. Good deal. Let's just do one more. We'll do two on both of them. Okay, so we have now the um, speeds and they look 300-ish and um, 15 to 20 up on, on Verizon. So let's hop over to our T-Mobile and there it is we're connected to the T-Mobile now we're gonna go we're gonna go back to speed test here okay we see we changed providers let's give it a another test here Okay. 
Okay, so that's what we got there. Okay, I just met a fellow over here named Bill, and I was just driving around doing some site surveys. This seemed like a pretty good area. Uh, just so happened he was outside, saw me parked uh, in front of his house here or across the street. He came over just to say hi, and uh, I asked him if I could, you know, get in his driveway and and uh, do some testing. So uh, we want to thank Bill from Magnolia, Texas. Now, when I give you a sense of where I am, there I am doing my testing. Let's go above the trees here, and you can see this is a very this is East Texas piney woods. So it's very dense in both piney woods and large oaks. Now, if we look straight ahead right there, that is the T-Mobile Tower right there on the um, kind of to the right there in your screen. Now I'm going to pan over and right there is another T-Mobile Tower and I'm going to pan over to the left and right there if you can barely see that is the Verizon Tower. Uh, okay as you can see here I got the um, uh, Verizon Cube over here and I got the T-Mobile uh, right on top of my pickup here. Let's go ahead and do some testing with these guys right here. And we're doing Verizon first. Okay, there you have it, T-Mobile and Verizon Home Internet Gateways. Okay, here are the final scores, and I just want to highlight the fact that I did put all the RSRP, RQ, and SINAR information for both locations. Okay, so you can see them here. You can stop this video and evaluate all this. I do want to say that what I did is just kind of score them very easily. Here's location one for Verizon, location one for T-Mobile, location two Verizon, location two T-Mobile, and I just highlighted in green here who had the best score and counted this all up. Looks like we had four and T-Mobile had two. So my final verdict in this situation and my testing is engineering is better than more bandwidth. I answered the question for you. Now, just a little bit in closing on these tests that I did. I did many tests over many days. I knew what the results were going to be because they were all similar. So after doing so many tests, I decided to bring some video in on it and show you guys exactly what happened and then take the scores. Now, again, I did not favor some tests over other tests. I took the test that I did live cold on that particular day. I hope this has been educational for you and thanks for watching.